just so the record's clear, because it's been a, a, a little while, um, I didn't ask you the content of those interviews. I didn't ask you the names of who you interviewed. I asked you whether or not you interviewed anyone from July the 31st until August the 8th. And I find it interesting that the FBI will tell us no interviews were conducted before July 31st. That apparently doesn't impact an ongoing probe. But between July 31st and August 8th, it does. Here's the good news. Um, I already know the answer to it. I went and looked at the file. The first interview that I can find is on August the 11th of 2016, which is 11 days after it began, which makes me wonder, on August the 6th, so you hadn't interviewed anyone, you're investigating this alleged Russian collusion with the Trump campaign. You're the lead investigator. You originated the investigation. You're the point of contact. You drafted the document. And here you are before you've interviewed a single solitary witness saying F Trump. Then that same day, your um, colleague, Lisa Page, wrote, maybe you're meant to protect the country from that menace. And you responded, I can protect the country at many levels. We're not even a week into an investigation that you originated, approved, were the contact for. You hadn't interviewed a single solitary soul until August 11th. And you're already promising to protect the country from that menace, Donald Trump. And then on August the 8th, you still hadn't interviewed anyone. You're eight days into your Russian collusion with the Trump campaign investigation. And you got another text from your uh, colleague, Lisa Page. Trump's not ever going to become president, right? Right? And you replied, no. No, he's not. We'll stop it. By the time you promised to stop him from becoming president on August the 8th, how many interviews had you conducted? Mr. Gowdy, so two answers to that. One, with regard to how many interviews had or had not been conducted, I have been directed by counsel for the FBI not to answer that question. Second, sir, I think it's important to take those texts in the context of how they were written and what they meant. And, there, and someone may ask you that question, Agent Strzok, but I didn't. I ask you how many people you interviewed before you wrote it. If you want to get into context, let one of my other colleagues do that with you. Here's what I want to know. Who's the he and he's not? He is then candidate Trump. So when you said, no, Donald Trump's not in, in connection with a question going to become president, what's the it? Chairman we'll Gotti. stop it. Chairman Gotti, that text needs to be taken in the context. I, I'm, of I'm asking, is. look, if you want to have a debate over a two letter word, we're going to have to do that some all the time. What and who did you mean by it? Mr. Gowdy, as I've stated, that text was written late at night in shorthand. I don't care when it was written. About. I don't care it's whether it was longhand, cursive. I don't care about any of that. I want to know what it meant, Agent Strzok. It would be his candidacy for the presidency, See, and my sense that the American it's, yeah, population it's not would not vote him into office. Right, right. Well, we hadn't gotten to the will yet. Well, I'm your, trying to, I'm trying to cut through the chase and explain the, the text. The I, will I is it. the American people. Is that right? That's your testimony. The will stop it. You were speaking on behalf of the American people. Is that correct? Mr. Gowdy, what my testimony is and what I said during extensive asking of this question during my prior interview is, I don't recall writing that text. What Are you denying you, writing the text? What I can tell you is that text in no way suggested that I or the FBI would take any action to influence the candidacy a of Agent Candidate Strzok, Trump. That, that is a fantastic answer to a question nobody asked. Yeah, Mr. Gowdy, My you asked what I to meant. you is Chairman, the, the wheel. Is going to be permitted to answer you the question said, being posed? We look forward to that. So your testimony. His time has expired, Mr. Ago, Chairman. Your testimony. Like two and a half a minutes. Weeks, it, it's going to be tough for me to get through it if I keep getting interrupted. Your testimony a couple of weeks ago was the we met the American people, which I found confusing because on November the 7th, which is the day before the election, you said this. These 
you were concerned that those same American people that you were speaking on behalf of might actually elect Donald Trump president. So you said, OMG, this is effing terrifying. Um, I think we know what effing means. I'm pretty sure we have OMG down too. What was terrifying about those same American people you trusted to stop him in August, not stopping him in November? What was so terrifying about that, Agent Strzok? Mr. Gowdy, I, I had, do not have a copy of the transcript. We have not been provided that transcript. It's your text. The, the it's not the transcript. It's your text. Mr. Gowdy, what I would say in that is, one, I was not referring to the American electorate at all. The American electorate, I respect in their decisions and their right to vote is absolutely a cornerstone of our democracy. So at no time did I insult or call into question the, the, the judgment or the, the power of the American electorate. What I was expressing in that text is my personal belief and my personal sense of how I saw and what I believed in the uh, potential upcoming administration. And see, that, that's what I find so confounding, because in August, you blamed the we on the American people, that the American people would stop it, because you don't want it to be you and Lisa Mr. Page, Chairman, and you don't want it to be order. the FBI. Are we not given five minutes to answer <laughs> questions? We have, been, we have indulged this harassment nine minutes. The this chair... Judiciary and the Oversight Committee... I the, we the gentlewoman, the gentlewoman will suspend. The chair, in agreement with the ranking members of both committees, agreed that there would be liberality in the questioning by the chairman and the ranking members of each committee. The gentleman will continue. What I find confounding, and Mr. Chairman, Agent we Strzok, expect that liberality on every one of our questionings. What I find confounding, Agent Strzok, is you were counting on the American people. That was the we you referenced in August when you said, we'll stop it. But the American people didn't stop it. He actually won. So then we go to March of 2017, and you're already talking longingly about him resigning. And then we go to the day that Special Counsel Mueller, well, before we go to that, that's March of 2017. March of 2016. You wrote, God, Hillary should win $100 million to zero. And I'm assuming Hillary would be former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton? That's correct. All right. In March of 2016, weren't you investigating her for potential mishandling of classified information? We were. Had you interviewed her yet? Uh, no. Had you interviewed more than 30 other witnesses that wound up being interviewed? Uh, I would have to check the case file, but I'll take your representation. That's well, if she had said something incriminating in your interview that took place months later of her, of, of her would she have won $100 million to zero then? Uh, likely not, no. Well, then why wouldn't you wait until the investigation was over before you have her the nominee and winning a general election against an opponent that hadn't even been named yet? $100 million to zero, Agent Strzok? That's how bad she should win? Mr. Gowdy, those personal expressions of my observing the political process of the presidential primaries had no bearing on my actions of any investigation to include the investigation of Secretary Clinton. You sir, couldn't think or of anybody a, else. Sir, you couldn't if I think may. of a single person that would not vote for Hillary Clinton for president? A hundred million to zero, sir, Agent that Strzok? Was, sir, that was clearly hyperbole, uh, which I... Well, let's say it was hyperbole. Let's divide it by ten. How about we say it was hyperbolic and divided by 10? 100 million divided by 10, I'm pretty sure it's 10 million. Zero divided by 10 is still zero. You couldn't think of a single solitary person that was going to vote for her for president before you interviewed her and while you were supposed to be investigating her. Congressman, clearly that's not the truth. Clearly I could envision millions of Americans who are likely and did vote for then candidate. Well, you wrote it. My point, sir. Did you write point, it? Did you write that? I text? did write that, sir. Okay. Were you under duress? Political expression engaging in hyperbole. Were you under duress? Asked and answered over and over again. The gentlewoman will suspend. The gentleman from South Carolina controls the time. All right. We're going to go into one other time period. May 17th, 2017. Bob Mueller is appointed. Your friend Jim Comey's been fired. He's already leaked the memos to his law professor friend and Mueller a special counsel. Do you remember how long it took for you to start talking about impeachment after Bob Mueller was appointed? I don't, sir. One day. One day. And you are talking about impeachment. And for anyone who may have missed it the day after his appointment, Agent Strzok, you did it again. Five days later.